I'm going to teach you how to read a surface weather map. And you just go into your browser, and this website is listed in Blackboard under Weather Websites. So www.rap.ucar.edu slash weather. This is a really great website. Um, it's got real-time weather data. It's by NCAR has a lot of information on it. You can get a lot of different things in one spot. That's why I kind of like it. I'm going to click on surface and I'm going to click on ICT which is Wichita. Alright, this is going to be over the Midwest and it's going to show you all the station plots. If you look up in the right hand corner it tells you the time. And the time is always done in UTC and this is October 3rd according to the UTC time now we're still as of right now we're not making this recording it's actually still October 2nd but again this is all done in UTC time so the time in Greenland we're already into the next day now I'm gonna go through and pick on the station plot for Columbia Missouri and only because it's a little bit more isolated a little bit easier to see there's nothing else, you know, kind of clustered around it. Like if you go to Kansas City, then it's a little bit harder to see what's going on. So for the Columbia observation, all the rest of them are done the same. The top number is always the temperature. The bottom number is the dew point. The temperature you got to get the air to in order for saturation to occur. And whenever you see a little bitty, in this case on this one, when you see the green like box, it just tells you that the skies are clear. You look up further up into like Iowa, then right here you can see that it's actually cloudy because the entire circle is shaded in. And depending on how much the circle is shaded in, it tells you whether it's maybe partly cloudy or maybe it's mostly cloudy. But in the case of Columbia, it's just an open green square, which tells me that the skies are clear. Then you have this sticking up top, and that is the wind direction. And wind is always measured from the direction it's coming from. So always from the direction it's coming from. Keep that in mind. So this is kind of a north wind, maybe north, northeast. But either way, basically we're talking about a north wind. And actually the speed of it is five knots. Everything when it comes to this is done in knots, not in the miles per hour. But when you're talking about smaller numbers, a knot and a mile per hour are pretty similar. So you can kind of consider that and your mind is thinking, well, how fast is five knots? Well, it's basically about five miles an hour. So the winds are really light. And you can tell that it's a five mile an hour wind barb. And that's because you have the line sticking up and then you have this coming in. Now, in another situation, we'll go down into barely into Kansas and the Oklahoma border you see there's a full line that's 10 knots and so you have to keep counting how many of these you see now a good example would be we're going to go up into Colorado and you see a long one and a short one well it's the 15 knots is what you're actually looking at occasionally you'll see a number right ahead the wind barb and when I go down into Arkansas right there we go look at this one right here right on the border and there's a G and then a number and that tells you that there's gusts so the winds are 10 knots in this case gusting to 22 knots so keep, keep in mind that that's something that's possible you're gonna see as well so now we've got 46 temperature 37 degree dew point the skies are clear the winds are north at about 5 knots. And then you have this number right along here. Now this number tells you the pressure. And it's coded. So what you have to do is you take the decimal point, which in this case is at the end, move it one place to the left. So you'll have 26.5. And then you've got to decide, do I add a 9 or do I add a 10 in front of it? And if you were to add a 9 in front of it, it would be 926.5. If you were to add a 10, it would be 1026.5. Well, your idea is to keep the pressure roughly between 950 and 1050. And since the 926 doesn't fit between that range, then you automatically know it's 1026.5.
millibars is the unit for that. So basically, we've got higher pressure has settled in to the Missouri, Kansas area. And in this case, just earlier today, we had a front move through and settle in a pretty chilly air mass on top of us. So the front is well off to the south. Can't even see it on the screen anymore. And with that cooler weather that has moved in, we had a high pressure that's moved this direction as well. And so very clear skies, very light winds, and since it's a cold air mass, it's going to be pretty chilly tonight. Okay, I'm going to go back now to that main page, and I'm going to show you a couple other things you can look at. There's a forecast button, and on this you can see way off over here to the right, there's some um, surface weather charts you can look at. This would be the current analysis, and you can see what's going on. Okay, that was the front I was telling you about, well to the south, high pressure starting to settle in. You can flip to the next forecast and see what's going to happen for the next couple of days. Now, it shows you the fronts on there, the triangles that are blue are cold fronts, warm fronts are half circles and usually done in red if you're looking at something in color. You have uh, low pressures and high pressures, and anywhere you have that green is telling you that it's going to be some precipitation. All the white lines that are around each one of these, those are isobars, they're lines of constant pressure. And looking at a surface weather map like this, wherever you see those lines really close together, which tells you that there's a lot of wind associated with that area. So where this high pressure is, the winds are really light, or not at all, and then as you get further and further away from that, you can see that the lines get closer together, so there's a lot windier in between. And if you remember on that last surface chart we saw, this was Columbia, Missouri, had extremely light winds, and then as you went down further to the south, right through here, we were looking at place in Arkansas, an Oklahoma border that had gusty winds. Well, these lines are a little bit closer together, so it's a lot windier down there. So that's an option you can look at to forecast and get some information. I'm going to click back to that forecast page. Another thing you can look at is these are model runs. There's three different types. The one that's up now is the RUC, the Rapid Update Cycle, and you can see it only goes to about a 12-hour forecast. Um, it takes in current conditions, and it's tries to be more accurate with what's going on within the next couple hours. And sometimes it is and sometimes it's not and that's why you got to take into account with some of these models start off well, some of them do not. There's one called the ETA and it gives you up to an 84 hour forecast and the GFS which can go out to 180 hours. And so basically this would be your long range model that way you can get some information for like what's going on several days down the road. Now each one of these has strengths and weaknesses not every single one of them are exactly right, just because you look at it, it doesn't will exactly happen as it says. But you can look at all of them and kind of get an average of what's going to happen. And, and it'll do a pretty good job of forecasting and let you know. And you can see there's a lot of information that you can get. I'm going to go back to the ETA. I'm going to click on a couple time frames. You can get the temperature, you can get the dew point, you can get winds. You get theta E, precipitation, and then also help you out with precipitation types. You can look at any of your upper air charts along with it. I'm going to click on precipitation, and it's going to show you the precipitation across the country. Now, you got to keep in mind that the stuff, for it, the stuff that's forecasted in UTC time, and you got to make sure you're subtracting the correct way in order to read these. Now, right now we're in daylight savings times when I'm recording this, so this is actually a 1 a.m. forecast. I'm going to flip down. This is 7 a.m. forecast for Sunday, October 3rd. And you can see there's nothing going on around the country. And it's going to be pretty quiet because that cold front moving through. 18 would be Z, or UTC. Z is another term they use for the UTC. That is a 1 p.m. forecast, and so basically it tells you um, previous six hours forecast time of what it's going to be like. And of course, again, pretty quiet across the nation. Going down to where it says 0Z, that's a 7 p.m. forecast right now. And you can see, again, not much going on across the country. Um, you've got more stuff going off into the ocean than you do actually on land. Very weak storms 
out over the west coast. And that would be a 1 a.m. forecast, which would be 1 a.m. Monday. So keep in mind when you're reading these time frames that you're reading the correct one to know what's going on in your area. Like in this case where it says 0Z Monday the 4th of October. Well for us, right here in Kansas City, that's actually a 7 p.m. forecast for Sunday evening, October 3rd. Make sure you can read these times. I will have some information posted so that way you can practice reading these times and really knowing what's going on with them. I'm going to click back. You can find out temperatures. Pretty self-explanatory. There's your temperatures along in Fahrenheit and you can read along and see what's going on. 7 a.m. forecast for Sunday. The temperatures are going to be pretty chilly around here. There's probably going to be some frost advisories going on for the beginning of October. Craziness. We'll come back to this from time to time and I will teach you how to really use them, especially the upper air feature for when you're trying to forecast for some tornadoes.